Let's build an AI agent that is optimized for handling PDF data. I'm going to be taking this dummy invoice data here, but the steps and logic you're about to see, you can apply to any type of PDF data that you want to input into this workflow. So therefore, by the end of this video, you're not only going to learn how to extract data effectively from PDFs, but you're also going to learn how we can take that data and leverage it in other applications. This specific video, I'm going to show you how to do with Google Sheets. But as you already know, you can apply that logic anywhere else. Let's jump in. Welcome back, y'all. Today's video comes from a suggestion from our community here down in the description down below completely free to join. Sarika basically asked, how do we take it so we can get a PDF here and automatically give it to an agent, get the data, extract it, and use it? So we're going to show that real quick. So to do that, go ahead and start your new agent workflow. Start stays the same, but the first little agent that we're going to build together here is going to extract the underlying data. Now, I'll be honest with y'all. At first, I was like, oh, are we going to have to use Assistance API here to get vision context? Are we going to maybe add an extra layer here in order to see the data that's actually on the PDF? But in reality, we don't have to do any of that. What's cool about these agents is that built in is vision context. And if you don't know what vision context is, essentially when dealing with a PDF, this is obviously a text heavy PDF, but some PDFs have maybe more images or diagrams, whether that's for real estate or engineering. Therefore, vision context is important to understand those diagrams and for the information we want to get out of it. In theory, when looking at an invoice PDF like this, which is very much text-based, we could programmatically create a Python script to extract all the relevant data. But let me just show you a one size fit all to get this data. And the one size fit all is going to be using this vision context that's built into agents. So first thing you wanna do is provide context of what the PDF is. Mine's an invoice. Look at this invoice PDF. What the heck is yours? I don't know. Is it like the most amazing dog treats and a product description of dog treats? Whatever it is, first line, context, PDF. Second line, we're going to identify what information we want to extract. So for me in today's video, we'll extract the company address, the total and the invoice number. But don't worry, we're gonna gut check this to make sure that the real data is getting pulled in. It's not hallucinating. So this is the address, this is the invoice number, and then the total is $262.50 USD. That's it. So what is the relevant data that you care? This can be much longer. If anything, we could format this a little bit better so it's easier to read, more legible. Add the data points that you care about that's coming from that relevant PDF. In addition, you can also extract different things such as summary, more open-ended data points. When I say open-ended data points, I'm essentially saying maybe more analysis-oriented data points. So for example, in the invoice PDF, maybe just like a, give me a two-sentence summary of the client and the customer. It doesn't really apply too well to an invoice example, but maybe for that real estate example, you'd want to get information like, give me a summary of based on this location, is this a good purchase based on square footage and location desirability? Keep that in mind. So for me, in theory, I could do summary of the invoice, not really relevant. So right now we're just gonna extract three data points that you can expand to however many data points you care about. It's safe. With this done, we can scroll down here. We got the model GBT5, that's fine. If you find yourself running into issues or errors or it's not working as effectively as it should, simply come up with a reasoning effort and then increase it to high. Since the purpose for me simply is invoice, invoice data, and three specific data points, honestly, I can leave this as low. Fast in, fast out. High gives the model just more IQ. So for your task, does it require more IQ? Tools, we're gonna go ahead and give no tools here. Don't worry, it's actually built into the agent. And then the response format will be JSON. This is fundamentally important for the next step here for it to be a JSON output. All right, so here we go. This is gonna be the structured JSON output. I can rename this. So maybe we do like invoice schema, voice data to make it more sense here, add property. And the property name is gonna be what we identified in the prompts. So for one was company, We'll just do company address. The other one was invoice underscore number. And then this one was a number because it's a number. I'm going to update. And then finally, total USD. But I'm just do total USD. And we can make this a number as well. Fundamentally, if you want to deep dive on what all these mean, I suggest you just do a screenshot, put it into an AI chat. Real quick, string, just text, number, bull, true, false, enum, categorization, objects, a little bit more complex array is going to be like a list all you need to care about for right now because most of the times you're extracting data is either gonna be a string or a num uh, when i say num i mean number update with that done then the next step here becomes fundamentally way easier so we got our data being formatted from the pdf in the user data section here we're going to leverage zapier and what zapier is going to allow us to do is to then take it to our google sheet here and with our google sheet we should see the data come in as the second row here automatically so we're going to go ahead and first create a prompt place this data in the relevant google sheet column identify where you're placing the data and the specific software this data is being placed into in theory if you're not really placing it anywhere maybe you're just 
just saying it to a Gmail, just say that as well. Whatever the use case for the data is, identify it here as the first line. Next, we're going to identify the data again. So what I'm gonna do to make my life easy is make sure you use the exact same dictation that you used in your actual, wherever you're placing the data. So invoice number, copy, invoice number, semicolon, company address, semicolon, total USD, semicolon. Now here is where we add context. Context is gonna be the invoice number found here, invoice number. So it wants to place it down there. I don't like that. Don't do that to me. Place it right here. And then what you'll notice here is that we can add the other ones. Input, output, parsed, invoice. No, no, not the invoice number. This will be the company address, underscore address. If you're wondering, Corbin, how'd you know it was that? Because if you go back here, go to the invoice data, we called it company address. Nice. Coming back over here though, assembly, open this little prompt up. Total USD, net context here, total USD. There we go. So we got all three data points being placed. Place this data in the relevant Google Sheet column. There we go. If you have more data points add the more data points hit save now this one because it's a little bit more complex i'm going to do too high in theory i could go medium test it see if it works but especially in the beginning y'all always opt for high just get it working once it's working then you can kind of play around reasoning effort next we're going to do a tool of zapier so first we're going to do add mcp zapier get your api key for me i've already created one so simply go to connect here copy secret it's a secret zapier Enter it here. If you're wondering what that is, why you even need to do that, essentially this is tells OpenAI that you have access to an actual Zapier account and the functionalities you're about to see. We're gonna add these tools together, don't worry. For now, I'm gonna uncheck these and the tool tools we're gonna add together is creating a spreadsheet row, the ability to actually functionally create a spreadsheet row within software. And then on top of that, get data from that spreadsheet at first, add. So now coming over to Zapier MCP, let's make sure we add those tools. I have already added them. You know what I'll do? I'll remove them from the server and we'll add them together. So we're gonna add tool. Google Sheet. In theory, we could add all the tools, but I honestly suggest you not to do that. First, let's just do lookup spreadsheet rows. This is gonna give the ability for the artificial intelligence model to get all the relevant data found in the spreadsheet. We're gonna do configure here. And then within configure, we're gonna make sure we choose the correct spreadsheet. So I'm gonna say set specific value for this field. This is so that we make optimized decisions and it doesn't get confused. For me, I call it easy data. Why? Because it's easy. So therefore, I'm gonna to go to here, easy data. Worksheet, if you have multiple worksheets, choose one, I only have one, so I'm gonna hit save. Add another tool. Now let's give the functionality for it to actually create a row. To do this, we can type in create up here, find data, take action. What's nice is that you can see all the things it can actually do functionally to that spreadsheet. So we're gonna create a spreadsheet row, but I want you to notice a couple of things. First thing, create multiple spreadsheet rows. What does this mean, Corbin? This means in theory, we could build an agent here that essentially if I provided like 10 invoice PDFs, it would be able to loop through them and create multiple spreadsheet rows. The logic's a little bit more complex. So obviously just do it with one at a time at first, just to get it working. I'm gonna come over here to configure. In configure, we're gonna select that spreadsheet again, which is gonna be easy data. Worksheet's gonna be the same. It's fine, it's all good. We're gonna hit save. Now, notice two things. First thing, notice that we've identified specifically the actions of create spreadsheet row, look up spreadsheet rows. We can give more actions here and you know, MCPs can give actions across all these different apps, over 8,000. And then on top of that, we've identified the specific area we wanna place that data, which for me was easy data. And that's what we called our Google Sheet here. Nice. Now with this done, because I essentially re-added those, let me see if the tools are selected here correctly. So yeah, let me do that again. Update, nice. And here we go. We got a prompt, we got our MCP, we get the reasoning effort to high. Let's see if this works. Go to preview. I'm gonna add my invoice data PDF that I showed earlier, this one right here. So we got our invoice data PDF, enter. First thing it's gonna do is extract the relevant data that we care about, which was the address, invoice number, and the total USD. We identified this. And once it extracts that, it's gonna put it into a JSON output. Don't overcomplicate it at all. JSON output is just a way we can format data so it effectively can be run thousands upon thousands of times in a structured manner. This is how the AI likes to talk to each other, okay? Or software in general as well. There you go, company address, invoice 7262.5. Now, right now in the workflow, it requires me to approve the action using Zapier. I'll show you how to make it so that it always just does it automatically because that can get frustrating, but we should be essentially executing right now. And there we go. Invoice number, the company address, and then 262.5. I'm over here, 262.5. Nice. Now, some of y'all might be like, Corbin, where's all the zeros? Like zero, 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 zero. Okay, we could format it that way if you want to, or alternatively, the total USD. Why is it formatted that way? Well, just we're here to format as currency, okay? But that worked perfectly and that executed how we like. So... In theory, I can close the preview, come over here, go to Zapier, simply click approval to never require approval. So it just essentially just does it. 
You don't need a yes. There we go. Make sure to leave a like. It is completely free. Check out that school community in the description down below. Let me know what other use cases you want to see using agent builders. One big thing, I already know half of y'all are going to be like, Corbin, this is cool, but, and that but is essentially you saying, how do we actually put this into an internal app for my team, push this to an actual website? Basically, how do we use that chat kit UI? Well, lucky for you, I've already created an entire video dedicated to how to take workflows like this and actually implement them to real websites or internal apps for your company. So without further ado, I'll see you in the next. Did we just learn how we could take basically any PDF, extract the data automatically and put it anywhere video? Nice.